different size. Some of the layman's version of similarity. A simple version. We say different size. So the, the layman's definition of Okay, then we have this technical version of similarity, and I'm going to start it for you, and it's similar, means, I like you, did, 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 I want you by yourself, try to fill in those four blanks, with the technical definition of similarity. Try to fill in those four blanks from memory. Okay, Clara, give us CA, please. CA, you got it. And there was a part of the army. Exactly. So, similar means we have congruent angles. Congruent angles, which gives us the same shape. Ratios, which are equal. Notice I've boxed ratios because we're going to use that concept in order to test for similarity. Testing for similarity means that's how you test to see if things are similar to begin with. So, ready? Can you trace the 10 and the 90? Circle, draw a little arrow, reduce left to right. One to nine. So you do one, two, nine. Okay, ready? Now, trace the eight. Now come over here, trace what matches the eight. Jessica, what number matches with eight on the other side? Eighty. Good call. Yes, notice it's not the 160, so we have eight and eighty. Reduce that. Quinn, 8 to 80 is what, ma'am? Try it again. 8 goes into 80. How many times? 8 times what is 80, my dear? It's like, yes. Okay. So this is a 1 to 10 ratio. Question, yes or no? Do the ratios match? No. no. Then these are not similar. Not similar. They are not the same shape, different size, even though they look like it. Okay, ready? You try these ones. Match up all three sides. Do all three ratios. Go. Except all three ratios. No. Okay, so now I've given you two examples of things that are not similar. Let's talk about what things are. Get the Dixie cup out. Someone hold both kids in the Dixie cup. Hold it there. Now, those are the same shape, different size. Those cubes are the same shape different size. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment with this on the next page. Did you find it, sir? Excellent. Ready. Hold up the little baby team. Someone just, someone else. Ready? Okay. The length of that baby Q edge, what is it? Just one edge. It's one unit. So ready? The edge length of the baby cube is one unit. Ready. Pass that baby cube off to somebody else. Go. Pass the baby cube off to somebody else. Ready. Count the number of squares all the way around. Okay, Michael, what'd you get? Six. Six. So there's one, two, three, then there's a four, five, 
I think that bottom six. So we have six units squared for that little guy. Okay. Hunter, how many physical cubes is the baby cube? It's just one. So we have one unit cubed. Okay. Put that back, back in the disk. Now, what I'm about to say, I'm going to pose the question. I do not want to get out of mind. And in that 30 seconds, to write, you're going to give me a prediction. I want you to write it down. I have absolutely no verbal feedback right now. Okay, so here's the question. Absolutely say nothing out loud. 30 seconds of silence. Take a one unit on a cube and you double the edge length. So say two units. Say double the edge. So physically double the edge. Okay, so we're going from one unit edge to a two unit edge. This is what I want you to predict. Don't say it out loud. What's going to happen to the surface area and the volume? Do not write down. Of course, it's going to be. Try to be a little bit more specific numerically. If the edge doubles, what happens to the surface area and volume? 30 seconds of silence. The edge doubles. What do you think happens to the surface area and the volume? What do you think? Commit to writing your desk. Not doing it wrong. I think you're wrong. But I do want you to say in writing. So if the edge doubles. What happens to both the surface area and the volume? How many said they're going to double as well? Yes, you said they're going to double as well. Can we get a little bit down here? You said we're about two thirds. All right. Okay, put, put your hands down. How many of you say you gave an answer other than that they, they double? That might be easier since you only have a handful of people. Okay. So the vast majority of you said you double the edge, every time the volume doubles, and you would be wrong. Let's go over that. The vast majority of you got that wrong. Let's go over why. Watch very carefully. Ready? The edge length here. Take a look at the larger cube, please. The edge length. The larger cube. Take a look at that. Okay, so our edge length doubled. That's where we started. So that's two units. Now, pass the larger cube off to somebody else. Start counting the squares on the outside. In other words, what's the surface area? Count. Count. Okay. Sarah, how many squares on the outside, ma'am? 24 is correct. So this was 24 units squared. Okay, pass the cube to somebody else. Count the physical cubes. Okay. Anthony, what did you get? How many physical cubes did I use? Okay, count again, buddy. Physical cubes, I had a stumble. No, it looks like one cube, but how many pieces did I put together? Okay, can you get the little cube? Where's the little cube, guys? Can you show them the little cube? Okay, now I want you to start counting. How many little cubes make up that big one? Okay, that exact same thing. Take a, take a look. Can you see it? How many is on the bottom, Anthony? Four, and then there's, you have a top layer. How many is there? How many all together? Bingo. So we have eight units cubed. Ready, guys? You shrink this back to the whole page. Watch the pattern here. Step number one, pattern number one, our edge length was one to two. That's called scale factor. So bring that down here. Scale factor was one to two. Scale factor, 
is one dimension. Scale factor is one dimension. Okay? Now, I'd like you to circle your areas. 6 to 24. Reduce that number. Reduce that number. Okay, Damien, 6 to 24 is reduced to what? That's 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 4. Ready? I'd like you to circle the volumes. Circle the volumes. We don't have to reduce anything. Israel, what's our volume comparison? 1, 2. 1 to what for volume? 1 to 8. Alrighty, guys. So take a look. The pattern is this. When we doubled the edge length, the area quadrupled, and the volume as big. And the reason is this. Ready? Under this, write this x to the first, y to the first. You see that when they say change dimensions? Change exponent. Change dimensions. Change exponent. So in the first dimension, one is like saying x to the first, y to the first. In the second dimension, we change our x signs from x to the other. Uh -huh. And why do that? Okay, so what's one times one? What's two times two? Four. Bingo. You got changes? Okay, when you change dimensions, you change exponents. This is going to be x to the third, y to the third, because we're in the third dimension. So one times one times one gives us one. Two times two times two again. Bingo. When you change dimensions, you change your exponential ratios. We're going to do two problems together. Ready, this page. I want you to finger track and read this out loud to yourself. I want you to underline the highlights, the words and phrases as you read. Ready, go. The first dimension is the first Okay, step number one in this after mumble reading is you should be highlighting or underlining keywords and phrases. The solids are similar, that's important. Surface areas, 16 to 9. We have the volume of the larger is, that's an equal sign, 256. Find the volume of the smaller. Now, most of you guys are still in the habit of instantly trying to figure out what you're doing. That's like trying to cook without getting the food out of the fridge. So that's exactly what I do. How many of you have those highlighted or something like it? That's the first thing you do. Highlight or underline keywords. Two, you translate it into a diagram or a list. We have similar solids, so I put my little similarity sign. I come back here and said, oh, I've accounted for that information. I cross it out. Areas. How many dimensions? One, two, or three? Area. Right above that, we're going to write 2D. So that means I come down to this list, and my ratio of my area, actual ratio, I write it down. I'm in the second dimension. Okay, so boom, boom. The volume of the larger prism, so I write volume larger, I actually label it, equals, that's 256 meters cubed. I've written that down, notice. Volume of the smaller is my question mark. So I come over here and I write volume equals box with the question mark. Now I know my positive. Okay. That's what I mean by giving the food out and organize. Organize it on your diagram and as you do, 
Dimension is this right now? Go fingers. One, two, or three. Okay. So that means right now we are in the x squared y squared position. Now fill out the variables x to the first y to the x to the third y to the third. First thing I want you to do is finish this chart with these two signs. Backtrack. Ready? Go. I want those two blanks. Ready. Ready. Elena, what's our X and our Y, ma'am? If X squared is 16, what would X have to be? Try it again. X squared. Let me let's do this. Let's actually write it down. X squared is 16. How do we backtrack this now? Yes, did you say four? I didn't hear you. You just now figured it out. Great. Give me give me Y while you're at it. Now that you see what you're doing. Three. Got it. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, ready? Okay, I'll take a volunteer for XQ1. Sixty-four. So four times four times four is sixty-four. Three times three times three is twenty-seven. Okay. This is one of the first things you should always do is get all dimensions Okay, now, next, these problems are going to come down because of the word ratio, they're going to come down to a proportion. Besides always doing a chart, I always want you to label the direction you're going to go. We're going to go left to right, so I'm going to write larger to smaller. Label your proportions, larger to smaller. Sometimes you're going to, you're going to see the word smaller and larger. Solid A, solid B. I might say solid one, solid two, but whatever it is, match up the direction you go here. Okay, ready? Okay, so we're using, we're going to go larger, 256 over smaller. We don't know, that's our target. Now, I want you to decide real quick, instantly, uh, what ratio goes there. Don't say it out loud. Hey, Trey, what are you thinking? The third dimension. So, for what ratio are we using, sir? Uh, it should be 64 to 4. Do we do 27 to 64 or 64 to 27? Bingo, because we're going larger to smaller. That's why we label, guys. Ready? Yes, you may. Uh, no, you may not use a calculator. Here, I got a deal for you. Ready? Beat this way. Beat me. No, no, no. I had to check, 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 check. Seriously? Nathan, what do you think? Not quite. The final answer is not 81. Sorry, Karen. I'm sorry, Karen. Uh, it's okay. Nathan, do it long. Okay, try it. Do it long. Okay. It's okay. I, I, see, I see where you're coming from. Okay, this way. Well, I just used the brain.
Kayak sekarang. Tinggal. Alrighty, guys. So, if you cross multiply, the key to multiply is not actually multiplying. It is factoring. So, I went here. I know 8 goes into both of these. So, I went this. I got 8 and 32. And then I went 8 into 32 four times. 4 times 27. Okay. Roll back into your teams. Ready? Roll back into your teams. In this one, you're going to read it out loud. I want you to fill out this entire chart, all three sides. And then your goal is this. Watch. I want you to find the value of um, X. Actually, start with a DW. And then X. And then Y. And then Z. And then pick up Z as last. Okay? Now, this is a relatively... Ready? I want you to roll in your teams. I want you with your teams right now. And start talking to each other. No, sir. I want the table filled out. I want the, I want the length of all of those variables. And then... I'm sorry, that's not Canadian Z. Let me make that more American Z. Parents were, so I, or mom was. So there's an American Z. Canada and Europe, they put a little wiki there. So it doesn't get mixed up with two. All righty, guys, you have six minutes to fill out the entire chart. It must be able to do your spells. You need to be able to do it. All right, guys, listen. I am not going to, I'm not started the timer yet, but you have to tell me which ratio or ratios did you use. That's a question. And why? If you can't defend yourselves, why? You won't get the point. Six minutes starts now.